In today's video, we are going to discuss in detail how to write a formal letter in your English Term 2 paper for CBSE Class 10 and get full marks. So let's get going. Hey everyone, this is Chetna and you're watching Chet Chat. It's Friday once again and we're talking about the formal letter. How to get full marks while writing the formal letter. This is a 5 mark question under the writing section. In today's video, we will go through two types of formal letters in detail. We'll learn an acronym to remember the structure of the format and we'll write sample letters for both types of formats. We'll also discuss the mark schemes and tips for getting full marks. For term 2, we have two types of formal letters. Letter of inquiry and letter of order. Usually, there could be a word limit of say about 120 words or so. Let's start with the format and after that we'll take up one sample each. For the letter of inquiry and for the letter of order. Now the format for both types remains the same. We begin with the sender's address. This will be given to you usually in the question. The sender is the person who wants to inquire say perhaps about an ad in a newspaper or the sports secretary who wants to order footballs for the school. So for example, let's say the sender's address is 50C Push Bihar, New Delhi. Now if you have to write on behalf of the school, the address should be the school's address. Not your own school, <laughs> but the school mentioned in the question. Delhi Public School, Kolar Road, Bhopal. After the sender's address, leave a line. Write the date, 3rd April, 2022. Stick to the format for the date, day, month, comma and year. Then leave another line. Write the receiver's address. First mention who is the receiver? Is it the editor, the manager, the director? This will be given in the question. So for example, if you have to inquire about a tour package, you will address the letter to the manager, Sunshine Tours and Travels, Mumbai. Done. Next, we have the subject. Inquiry regarding holiday package or subject placement of order for tennis rackets. Remember to write the word subject as well. Leave a line and write the salutation. You can say respected sir or respected ma'am or if you don't know the gender, you can always write respected sir slash ma'am. Finally comes the body. We'll discuss the body in detail when we take up the examples. But the body should have three paragraphs. First, introduction. Where did you see this ad? What is your interest in it? Perhaps you need to give reference to the source of information. Two are details. This is where it's going to differ for the two formats. And the third part of the body is concluding remarks or call to action. You've got to also finally end with closing compliments like thank you, yours sincerely or yours faithfully and your name. Again, the name will be mentioned in the question. If not, you're free to write any name of your choice. Now, I'm going to give you a simple acronym to remember this order. SAD RASU SABOTAC NAMES Sounds like SAD RAJU SABOTAGED NAMES Sender's address, date. Receiver's address, subject. Salutation, body, thank you. Closing compliments, names. Now, let's see some examples of letter of inquiry and letter of order. But before that, I would like to give a shout out to Geeta for this amazing message. And if you want a shout out in my next video, leave me a comment below with the hashtag Chet Chatters. And now for the letter of inquiry. We write this letter to obtain information. Read this question and let's solve it together. You are Raj slash Renu of 55 Blue Rose Apartments, Majestic Circle, Bangalore. As you have a passion for learning languages, you want to do a crash course in Japanese language from Lingua Fiesta, Whitefield, Bangalore. Write a letter in about 150 to 200 words to the director, Lingua Fiesta, inquiring about the duration of the course, details about batches, faculty, 
timing and the terms and conditions for admission. We know that this is a letter of inquiry, since it is inquiring about some stuff. Okay, let's begin. Sad Rasul Sabotak names. Sender's address. So this will be Raj or Renu's address. 55 Blue Rose Apartments, Majestic Circle, Bangalore. Leave a line. The date. Whatever the date of your exam is. 3rd April 2022. Leave a line. The receiver's address. Who are we writing the letter to? The director, Language Fiesta, Whitefield, Bangalore next. And now the subject. The subject is important so that the director knows immediately what your letter is about. Of course, the director is a very busy person and doesn't have the time to go through the whole letter multiple times. So the subject is like a shortcut that saves them time. So here we can write subject inquiry about crash course in Japanese language. Leave a line and salutation. Respected sir slash ma'am. And now we come to the body. The first paragraph has two elements. We begin by giving reference to the source of information. Where did you come across this ad? Second, we need to convey interest. Why are you interested in learning Japanese? This will attract the director's attention. Okay, this student is passionate about languages. She is a good student, so I must admit her to my institute. So let's say the first paragraph can be something like, I came across the advertisement for Lingua Fiesta Academy in the newspaper. Mention the name of the academy in the first line. You can also mention the date of the newspaper if you want. I came across the advertisement for Lingua Fiesta Academy in the Times of India newspaper on 1st January. I have a passion for learning languages and I want to learn Japanese. Or, I have a passion for languages and want to enrich my abilities by learning Japanese from your prestigious institution. Of course, since you are the one approaching their institute, use gracious words like prestigious institute, reputed college, well-established academy. This creates a good impression. Once you have established your interest, we move to the second part of the body, which is details of the inquiry. This is the second paragraph. I would be grateful if you could provide me with the following information. This is a standard phrase, no matter what the inquiry is about. You can write all the details you require in bullet points, so they won't miss out on anything. Let's say, I would be grateful if you could provide me with the following information. Colon. One, duration of the course. How long is the course going to be for? You can also ask if the course will be online or offline. Two, batches. How many days a week will the classes be? Three, timings. Next, you can ask about faculty, terms and conditions for admission. I want to inquire if there is an age requirement or educational requirement for enrollment. So, do you need to be 16 or do you have to have finished class 10 to take this course? Even though they haven't mentioned this in the question, you can ask about the fee structure as well. Great! Now, you've asked all the questions. And now you've come to the concluding paragraph. Try to set a deadline so that they will get back to you whenever you want them to. Kindly send me the prospectus and application form at the earliest as I would like to start the crash course in my summer vacation. Since you want to do the course as soon as possible, they'll get back to you faster. Finally, after the body's over, we end with a thank you, yours sincerely, Renu or Raj, whatever suits you appropriately. Let's take a look now at the mark scheme. So out of five marks for the letter, two are for content. Make sure you write where you saw the ad, whether you saw it in the newspaper or in a website or heard about it from a friend and why you're interested in it. You also need to give your personal introduction. That is very important. Not a whole story of your life, but just a relevant bit like, 
I'm interested in coding if it's an inquiry about a coding class. The next two marks are for expression. So have you written the correct format? Is your letter structured in a proper way? Is your tone formal and clear? To maintain this tone, keep a cache of words ready. Kindly, grateful, with due respect, etc. What are the other phrases that you use in a formal letter? Drop them for me in the comment section below. And the last one mark is for your spelling, punctuation and grammar. So proofread your letter at the end to omit those minor errors. Now let's move on to the next letter, letter of order. Let's take an example. As head of the music department of your school, write a letter to Hyderabad Music House placing an order for some musical instruments like sitar, harmonium, tabla, tanpura and guitar. You are Anvita slash Anil of DIPS School, Rohini, New Delhi. You already know the format. Start with the sender's address and date. Sad. Dips School, Rohini, New Delhi. Leave a line and date. 1st April 2022. Leave a line and receiver's address. Now in this case, we are not directly told who we have to write this letter to. The director, the manager, the principal. So you'll have to use your own judgment. Who usually handles sales of musical instruments in the company? Perhaps a sales manager. You've got the man. You can also just write the manager if you're unsure. It's safe and a sure shot. The manager, Hyderabad Music House. Subject, placement of order for musical instruments. Leave a line and salutation. Respected sir, ma'am. Now, we need to refer to a past document in this letter, maybe a quotation. So, a quotation is a deal or a discussion that was done between your school and the company to fix the price. So, you need to give the music house this reference for them to send you the correct pieces at the correct price. So, this letter has reference to the quotation dated 1st March 2022. Of course, the date of the quotation should be a few days before the date of the letter. Our school management was very satisfied with the last order you supplied to us. And hence, we would like to place another order. Now, in the second paragraph, make a table to ask for the exact products with their quantities and any other specific details. Kindly send us the following items at the school address. Make a table with serial number, item, quantity and any other specifications that you want to give. You can add another column if you want to also mention the material or any brand that you may want. Maybe like an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar. Finally, we come to the concluding paragraph. This is very important because this is all business. Yes, you need to be very precise in a business arrangement, so there is no argument later. Make sure you write about the transport cost, condition of the goods, any discount applicable. I hope the delivery will reach us in 15 days. Please include the transport cost in the final bill or, as per the quotation, the transport charges are included in the quotation. Any damage during transportation is completely your responsibility. You have given us no cause for complaint in the past and I'm sure this time too, all items will be in good condition, well packed and delivered. This is a good phrase to use. You have given us no cause for complaint in the past. This makes the tone formal and not like you're threatening the dealer. You'd better send all the guitars in good condition or else I'll... Angry expression with wagging finger. <laughs> you can end with, I hope all the items will be in good condition, well packaged and deliver on time. Yours faithfully, Ravina, Sports Secretary. You can use both yours sincerely and yours faithfully in any of the letters. Just remember that yours does not have an apostrophe. Avoid this common mistake. And finally, for the bonus tips, 
start your letter on a fresh page so that it fits into one page. The address at the top and yours sincerely at the bottom should be one below another so it looks neat and tidy. Once you get the question paper, identify the components of the letter. So underline the sender's address, receiver's address and so on. And last but not the least, it's a formal letter. So keep the tone formal. Avoid contractions like I'd, can't, etc. Use the full forms instead. All the best for your formal letter. Take care, do well and happy learning.